there is a new way to run Facebook ads. And with recent changes to the ad policy on Facebook, your ad account is not safe. That's why in today's video, I'm going to reveal the new best protocol for running your Facebook ads profitably and safely. And I've personally applied this protocol to my own clients' businesses, and I've spent over 70 million bucks over the past seven years, generating over 150 million of directly attributable income. Some of those clients are Steve Harvey, Miracle Brand, Dr. Kellyanne, Women's Reign, and more. So we're on the computer right now, and we can see the clearest difference here on the first metric that I wanna pull up is the thumb stop rate. Between these two ad sets, the bottom one has a 43.29% thumb stop rate versus the top one that's just at 32%. And if you're not sure exactly what thumb stop rate is, it basically just measures the scroll stopping power of your Facebook ads. The formula is three second video views divided by total impressions. And it measures how many people are watching that first three seconds of your video. And what's really noticeable about these two ad sets is the difference in engaged retention. You'll see that there is a pretty big gap with the 25 to 50%. So there's 9,000 people that are watching to the 25% mark and there's 4,700 people watching to the 50% mark. So about a 50% drop off in retention. But if we go to the bottom ad set, 240,000 people watched up to that 25% mark. And then the 50% mark, only 90,000. So there's a much bigger gap between the 25% and the 50% mark on the bottom ad set compared to the top ad set. A couple other really important metrics that we want to take a look at being frequency, CPM, and CTR. Frequency is going to tell us where in the funnel our ads live. And if you're running with broad targeting, that's going to give you a ton of insight into what ads are retargeting users over and over again, because broad targeting actually does retargeting for us. Now, keep in mind that data is for the entire month of June, 2024. If I instead take a date range of the last seven days from the time of making this video, the frequency goes down further and we can actually drill down and say, hey, job 18, excited Janelle, actually has a higher frequency. So it's more of a middle of funnel type of ad. Whereas job three, hot sleeper is a 1.17 frequency. So it's more of a top of funnel type ad. And you can drill down further if you want by going to the breakdowns and then going to day. And we can see day by day where the frequency lies. And so while yes, job 18 is a little bit more in that middle of funnel sector, both of the jobs are actually a top of funnel ad on a day to day basis. Next, we'll move on to CPMs. CPMs measure the quality of experience a user is having after viewing your ad. And so if you have really low CPMs like both of these ad sets here, that means that your ads are doing a very good job at keeping users happy and engaged on the platform. Whereas if you have a really high CPM like $50 plus, that typically means that your ads are causing friction for the users. They're clicking off, they're not spending as much time. And as a result, Meta is upcharging your CPMs, which means you pay more money for every impression. And then lastly, we'll take a look at unique link click-through CTR. And the reason we do this rather than using something like CTR all is because we want specific data. This is going to limit it to a one click per user, meaning the same user can't click on the same ad multiple times and shoot up and artificially boost our CTR. Additionally, we're only measuring those that have actually clicked the link and gone to the landing page rather than clicking the ad and then never visiting because they bounced or they exited it out or they never loaded it. CTR is really good at measuring how effective your call to action is on your video. So if you have a really low CTR, I would highly suggest that you add some elements to your video or even image creative that allow the user to better understand the purpose for them seeing the ad. What is the next step that they need to take? Now let's switch gears here and let's actually talk about how to set up your ads the right way. We'll go into ads manager here, click the green create button, and then you'll be greeted with this screen that shows you a ton of different business objectives. Now, depending on what your actual goal is with Facebook or meta ads, you'll choose a different one. But for the majority of you listening, you're going to choose one of two, either leads or sales. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to choose leads. And then we're going to be greeted by this screen. We want to click off of ASC or advantage plus shopping. And we want to click off of tailored leads or recommended settings. And the reason why we want to do that is because it gives us more control as advertisers into the exact specific settings that we're putting in our ads manager. So click off, go to manual leads campaign, click continue, and you'll be greeted with this screen where you'll have a fresh campaign ad set and ad to set up. And you don't really need to change anything on the campaign level. You can use CBO if you want, but for the most part, if you have a new ad account, you're gonna be creative testing, meaning you're gonna be uploading ads, you're gonna try and get 
data on those ads, figure out what works and what doesn't. And for that specific strategy, ABO or ad set budget optimization works a lot better. So we'll click over here and go to the ad set level here. Now for lead ads, there are two main different types of conversion locations you'll want to look at. Number one is going to be the instant forms. And number two is going to be your website. If you have a website with conversions API or pixel set up, then you'll be able to use the website and track leads that submit through your form. However, what I like to do and what I've spent a lot of money doing is using instant forms, which is a native in platform tool that doesn't have any attribution loss, meaning the data is crystal clear and perfect. So you have as much data to give the algorithm as possible in terms of who is your ideal customer and who's reacting positively to your ads. And you also have something that is stored directly on meta, which means they give you a CPM decrease whenever you're running lead generation campaigns to instant forms versus a website. Now, if you're running a sales objective, you basically get to choose between website or app if you have an app that you're trying to drive sales to. For instant forms, go ahead and click that and then go down here and choose your daily budget. My recommendation is that you spend at least $50 a day on every single ad set that you ever upload to Facebook. And the reason why we do this is because there is kind of a certain minimum viable amount of spend before you can make accurate optimization decisions. Realistically, you can't spend five or 10 bucks a day on an ad set, let it run for a few days and then make decisions based off of that. And it gets a lot worse when you're running a sales objective and you're trying to sell a product. Let's say your average order value is 50 bucks and you're spending $5 a day on an ad set. Well, you're not even spending your full AOV on a daily basis. How are you going to get a purchase every single day to try and gauge whether or not your ad is going to break even or make you money? So we're gonna edit the budget and go to 50 bucks a day. And then very importantly as well, you want to set the start date to the day following the current day. For me today is June the 25th of 2024. And so I would want to select my start date, June the 26th at 12.01 AM. And the reason we do this is very simple. Facebook at random will spend all of your daily allotted budget within a few short hours if you set the ads to go live the same day that you upload them. There's no way to predict which ad sets or which days are going to have this issue. And so just to be safe, you got to set it for the next day at 12.01 AM. For audience controls, you can go ahead and select the country or the location that you want to show your ads to. But very importantly, you do not want to use any detailed targeting or lookalikes because those are depreciating assets that get worse over time. You want to use broad targeting, which gives you the highest possible scale potential in your ad account and gives you the lowest possible cost from meta. For placements, I also like to leave it pretty open, advantage plus placements. Now, if you have data and you've already been spending money and you understand from the data that certain placements or even perhaps certain age groups or certain genders are reacting better to your ads and give you a better customer acquisition cost or a better cost per lead, then by all means, come into the ad set level and make those changes. That's a good business decision. But until you have that data, you should be leaving everything as open as possible. Click next and go to the ad level. And here's really where the creative stuff starts. At the top, we'll choose our Facebook and Instagram account. So you can use a corporate or a business page. You can use a theme page or you can use an individual or a whitelist page. And then you'll go down over to ad setup. You'll click single image or video versus carousel. And if you're using the sales objective, there might be a catalog option. Instead of that, click single image or video and also make sure you select multi advertiser ads. Select your ad creative. You can choose between an image or a video. You can delete the one that's already there and upload a new one. And then we'll choose our primary text, our headline and our call to action. And notably, I left out description. And the reason we don't want to use a description is very simple. Users don't see it. And what's worse is it actually takes up a combination slot. Meaning if we instead type a description like here, test, and then our headline test number two, what Facebook will do is it will take the description and put it where the headline is supposed to go if it thinks it will perform better. But unfortunately, that also adds a variable that is not our ad creative and is not our headline or primary text. And those three together have much higher conviction on whether an ad is actually going to convert a user on your business objective. When the preview on the right hand side kind of fills out, you have your primary text right here, you have your headline right here, and then you have your call to action. Lastly, on the little options and edit button side, advantage plus creative, you want to make sure that you have these enhancements turned on. And what these things do is they apply little visual touch ups and improvements and music and all these types of effects on your ad to try and improve conversion rate and improve engagement 
placement rate on those ads within their placements. So go ahead and click all optimizations and then click save. Now here again, I've selected lead form, so I'm going to have a lead form option for my destination, but you can also choose a website URL. This is where you would copy your product page or your VSL page or another page that you want to drive traffic to. And then lastly here in the tracking, make sure you have your website events turned on even for lead generation and app campaigns. And you want to use UTM parameters or URL parameters. Even if you're not using a third party service to try and track your data, it's still very important to use these because in the future, if you do end up spending a lot of money on ads and you do want to track data with UTMs, you'll have the reference backlogged. You won't have to reset your ads and reset the UTMs just because you use a third party tracking software. And if you want a guide or a reference template on which UTMs to use, check the description of this YouTube video and I'll paste a template in there that you can just copy and put into your ads manager. When everything is said and done, click publish and your ads will show as scheduled for the following day. And best of luck because that's it. It's really that simple. Now that you know how to set up your ad campaign and which options to select, now it's time to learn how to develop winning ad creatives. You can do that by clicking this video right here and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.